On today's two on your side town hall, a bit of a roller coaster of vaccine news. We got some answers, uh, positive developments from Pfizer, but amid a concerning update from Johnson and Johnson, we'll talk about all that. Plus, believe it or not, a smartwatch could know whether you have COVID before even a test can. We're going to show you how that works. And play ball. It is opening day for the big leagues, and it won't be long before first pitch here in Buffalo. We're going to chat with a guy who knows the game about as well as anybody around. And we are going to start today with a mixed bag of vaccine news to get to. Good evening, everybody. I'm Kate Welsh, chauffeur. And I'm Michael Wooten. We've gotten spoiled lately with all the positive headlines about the shots, with more people eligible and, of course, more doses getting delivered. Now, there is a bit more good news today, and that's where we'll start. Pfizer putting out its latest trial results, showing that you keep strong protection from COVID six months after you get that second dose of its vaccine, at least six months. And not only that, Pfizer says that of all the cases of the so-called South African variant that have been identified in this country, none of them has been in anybody who got the Pfizer vaccine. The bad news, though, is the breaking story we brought you yesterday here on the town hall. Johnson & Johnson confirming that it had to toss out a batch of a key ingredient of its vaccine because it didn't meet standards. NBC now reports ingredients from the AstraZeneca vaccine were accidentally mixed in. So that batch was enough to make 15 million doses, which will temporarily stop a rollout that has already been slower than expected. And joining us live to talk about this right now, Dr. Nancy Nielsen. She is in charge of planning the vaccine distribution for this region and is also a senior associate dean for health policy at UB's medical school. We're certainly glad to get to speak with you twice in one week. And of course, you're the perfect person to talk about this with. Hi, Kate. Well, you described it exactly. This was a manufacturing facility in Baltimore that was making the ingredients for two different vaccines, AstraZeneca and J&J. &J. And for some awful reason, somebody put some AstraZeneca ingredients into the soup that was supposed to be for J&J. &J. The good news is the quality um, the, the quality control mechanisms worked. So this never got released. This facility, by the way, has never been approved yet by the FDA to release uh, any vaccine. So no vaccine coming out of that facility has made it into, uh, into circulation. Yeah, so it seems like the system worked, Dr. Nielsen. And just to follow up on that quickly, um, the, do we know what kind of impact this is going to have as far as obviously we're, we're not going to get some doses of the J&J &J vaccine that maybe we thought we were going to get? Do you have any sense right now on, on how that's going to affect the rollout here? Well, first of all, it's not going to affect any J&J &J that is already here or that is already at the state health department. So that will be coming. It's in the future and we don't know the impact because we don't know how much of the 15 million was coming to New York at all. To the better news now that we mentioned the latest trial from Pfizer showing that it's still effective six months later. It also seems to be effective against that South African variant. How significant are the numbers that we got today on that? Well, they're really terrific, Kate. Uh, you know, if you think about it, the concern that we've had about the variants is that both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were tested when those variants were not widely present in the United States or in the world, actually. So now we know that the South African, which we're very worried about because it's quite contagious, uh, that you are protected with that vaccine. So it's really a whole lot of good news. The only bad news on the vaccine scene is this J&J &J snafu that was caught before anything bad happened. It shouldn't have happened, by the way. Yeah, something else from Pfizer, Dr. Nielsen, that we wanted to ask you about. After the company released that data, um, they said that they're going to be applying for a full biologics license application later this month. So basically, that would replace the emergency use authorization, which has allowed this to, to be used and to go into people's arms. Um, I wonder in a practical sense if that means anything, but also just... You know, for, for skeptics out there, I've certainly read and I've heard from people who have said, well, if it's a, an emergency use authorization, maybe I don't want to get it. Might this help with some of those folks? 
It, it might. Uh, for those that, that worry about stuff like that, frankly, the emergency use authorization received such scrutiny that I think people should should have tremendous faith in, in this. But you're right, this would be full licensure and uh, not emergency use. And so it's good news for the company. I'm sure their stock will go up, but does it have any practical value? No, unless it convinces somebody who who thought emergency use might have been granted readily. It wasn't, it was very heavily scrutinized. Getting back to the situation here in our area, the Erie County Health Department said today that it is finding more cases now of COVID variants in the county, and it believes that that is why we've been seeing the cases going up and the hospitalizations going up. What do you make of that? Well, I, I totally agree with that. Every week, the chief medical officers in our region have, have a Zoom meeting, and we hear from the UB Institute for Healthcare Informatics, and they do this modeling. And it, it, they are predicting that this is the variants uh, that are more contagious, and that's part of the reason. Of course, we don't know if it's people's behavior as well, Kate, it could be, but we do need to be concerned about the variants. They're definitely here, and that's why we need everybody vaccinated as quickly as we can get vaccine here. Such great insights. Dr. Nancy Nielsen has been our guest. She is with UB and also part of the team of people who are working really hard to plan out the vaccine distribution for our entire region. Dr. Nielsen, it's great to see you again. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again. And later in the evening here on Channel 2, we want to let you know that you're going to be getting an inside look at the facility where every single dose of the Pfizer vaccine starts. The plant is in Missouri. It starts there as Pfizer workers create the substance needed to make the mRNA. So NBC News' Stephanie Gosk got a step-by-step -step explanation of how it happens. When you come to work every day yep. and you come in this room and you see what's happening, what does it mean for you to be a part of this process <laughs> that is at you know, the base of bringing the pandemic to an end? Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime career opportunity. I mean, we work on a lot of different processes, um, but I've never worked on something that impacted the entire world like this. On NBC Nightly News, more exclusive access and details on how Pfizer scientists have slashed the time it takes to produce the vaccine. <laughs> and how about this? A smartwatch could help pick up the signs of COVID before you have any symptoms. Yeah, this story certainly caught our attention. Reporter Shandell Menezes shows us how it could be a vital part of ending the pandemic. This is one of those times when technology has your back. I, I'm a big believer in these things. <laughs> these things are wearable smart devices, Apple watches, Fitbits. So this is an aura ring and there's little sensors in here. So it picks up your pulse and your, um, it must like figure out like your respiratory rate, your baseline heart rate and something called heart rate variability. That's the key term right there, heart rate variability. Cardiologist Pyle Kali explains that tracking this is a game changer in detecting the virus. We know that a marker of health is actually having variable heart rate throughout the day and having high heart rate variability or your heart rate and your, from beat to beat sort of changing. It's just a marker of how well your nervous system is responding to the environment. Tara Scott's aura ring and knew she had COVID before she did. The first thing that I saw was my heart rate was up and my body temperature was up like by the ring. Three days later, she had symptoms and tested positive for the virus. So if you have an Apple Watch, I'm going to walk you through how you can use it to track your heart rate variability. You're gonna to wanna to open up the Breathe app on your watch and start the session. So let that go for a minute. Once you're all done with that, you're going to use your iPhone to see your results. Open up your health app. You're gonna go over to browse, click on that heart subsection, and then you'll see heart rate variability. Even if you don't have one of these smart devices, you can still keep track of your baseline heart rate. So you kind of flex your wrist uh, extend your wrist, excuse me, like this and find your pulse right here. And then, you know, count how many heartbeats you have in 30 seconds and multiply that times two. Do this two to three times a day at the same time for the most accurate results. Yeah, we talked about this earlier on Most Buffalo as well. It really is 
remarkable what you're able to learn. And this is another example of what we've been able to learn as time has gone on and, and give those little clues. As time has gone on, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> still have just one of these old fashioned watches. I think it's time to get in the cen this century, right? I have, I have one watch and the battery is not working. So <laughs> it is of no help to me whatsoever. We're winning today. Yeah. Well, coming up on the town hall, a debit card shows up in your mailbox claiming to be free money from the government. Should you trust it? Well, that's what the Verify team is here for. Yeah, and as we head to break, we'd like to wish a happy birthday to Sister Erlinski Helinski. Linsky, a local nun who celebrated 100 years today by getting her second dose of the Moderna vaccine. Catholic Health threw her a party today at the clinic at the Felician Sisters in Chictawaga, complete with cake, ice cream, and virtual visits from family. And now that she's fully vaccinated, Sister Ursuline hopes to be able to get out and about again soon. We're hoping that you get to as well, Sister. Happy birthday and stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back.